We are so glad that you joined us today. We believe that God wants to do great things for you and through, and we would love to hear about it. So please take a moment to share your story or prayer request with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org or download our church app available for both iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message. Well, go ahead and stand up. Let's him everybody worship.
Braden, have you asked Jesus in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Then because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dave, have you asked Jesus in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? And because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Juliana, have you asked Jesus in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Then because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Adeline, have you asked Jesus in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. That because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Madison, have you asked Jesus in your heart as your yes. personal Lord and Savior? Yes. You're ready. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead, find your way back to your seat. Let's sing like this. What is this love that won't relent? It's calling out with heaven's breath Who's reaching wide to save our souls Only you who What is this grace? What is this grace that makes no sense? We could never recompense Who gives us all a second chance?
help us. Help us not to be shaken, God, not to only give lip service, God, to, to trusting you and not being shaken, God, but to actually do it. We can't do that in our own power, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. We need our trust to be placed and anchored in the rock of our salvation, not on the shifting sands uh, or the sinking water that is around us, God. We put our whole faith and trust in you, and we will not be shaken. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. someone someday then lay it all down before the king you want to be whole you want to have purpose in this life you want to have virtue and purify your mind you want to be set free today all down before the king oh yeah this is my desire this is my return this is my desire to be used by you And I know my life is to do your will. And I know my heart is to do your will. This is my desire. This is my return. much I can do to repay all you've done so I give my hands to you someone someday that lay it all down before the king lay men thank you so much Aaron and that's my desire this morning is before we leave his place.
It will all be real, and we'll lay it down before the king. If you've got your outline, you can throw it away today. Um, you know, I have all my sermons usually ready to go by Tuesday or Wednesday, and had this one ready to go. It's all been done, the keynote, all the screen stuff. But Saturday morning, the Lord has just been impressing upon my heart to go another direction, to share some things that, actually some things that I've been wanting to share, but not out of fear, but maybe out of disobedience, because I said, no, Lord, you, you, here's that statement again, you don't understand. Huh? Know what I mean? And you know, I've said before that if my job, if I come up here to please people, I'm going to displease the Lord. But if I come to please the Lord, then it doesn't matter who I displease. Do y'all understand that? When this church was looking for a pastor um, a long time ago, over six years ago, and when they sent me some questions, there were 40 of them in the beginning. And here's one of the first questions. Can you work with our staff? What kind of question is that? I never met the staff. Amen? But we're working well together. But they asked me a lot of different things, and then they told me the direction that they would love to see this church go. Well, if you don't know anything else about me, if you've been here for any length of time, I'm one of the most transparent people you'll ever meet. And sometimes my transparency can be a double-edged sword because I have no filter sometimes when it comes to saying the things that I feel that God has impressed upon my heart to say. So there's been a lot of things and that's been going on in my mind. And so I guess we'll just kind of call this the state of the church talk. And we'll get to this, uh, that sermon that was planned for the day next week. Now, let me just say this. If you are a first time guest. I don't think you could have showed up at a better time because uh, what you're going to hear uh, today. I run into people almost every week who say I used to go to the temple. Talking about Lima Baptist Temple. And most of all their stories are similar. There was this thing in 2005 called a church split. Anybody remember that? Well, we're not here to dwell on the past, but I want to tell you something. When I came here, I knew that. I knew a lot of things. I inherited a lot of things, but I also inherited Jesus in my life when I was 10 years old. And I know that he's the one that fights my battles. He's the one that fights this church's battles. He is the one that cares more for us than we could ever, ever care for ourselves. Then occasionally, I run into someone who says, I, won't, I went to visit the temple because I hear that, man, y'all are so different than years ago. In other words, you're so welcoming, you're so loving, you've just been so kind. Not only that, then occasionally I hear them say, you know, uh, you don't have to dress a certain way. You can go there if you have tattoos. You can go there if you have something pierced. Anybody hear what I'm saying today? Things have changed, haven't they? Things have changed a lot. I always have wondered if Jesus was really in here today in the flesh, how would he dress? What would he look like? What music would he like? I hear people say, you know, the thing that I love about the temple, and the reason we showed up is I hear that the gospel is preached every Sunday. And people are always getting baptized. You have a heart for the community. And you don't know the stories like I know a lot of times of these people, this family of four even today that went through the waters of baptism. For those of you who are watching my TV today, I want you to know that we are a different church in a good way. My philosophy is come just as you are. 
We are a moving, listen, we are, let me just say this. We are a more loving, as I said, a more loving and a more welcoming church and striving to do better. As long as I'm here, my goal is for us to move forward for the kingdom of God. And we would love to have you join us when you can. It's always better in person, so that's why I always ask you to come. You never know what you may miss. Church, do you know that we baptize five times the national average of all Southern Baptist churches and independent Baptist churches combined? Why did I throw Baptist, Southern Baptist? Southern Baptists have over 47,000 churches. Independent Baptists have close to 4,000. Out of 50,000 churches, no matter if they run 10,000 or 100, we baptize five times the national average. That just goes to say thank you for doing your job, for being, for, you know, reaching out to people in our community. And I've said this so many times from this pulpit too. We never, ever need to take that for granted. We are for the gospel. We are for true worship. We are for ministering to our community and people outside these walls. A lot of times I love to repeat things because I don't want you to forget them. But two things I said when I came to LBT. We want to be a church that is known for what it's for and not what it is against. The second thing I said is you need to get very comfortable at being uncomfortable. You can either choose courage or you can choose comfort, but you can't choose both. You know, we now welcome and receive people that this church never would have in the past. Even my former church where I grew up in the 60s and 70s. You know why? Because some don't dress like us. They don't smell like us. They don't act like us. They don't have the same type of outward appearance like us, but if I have the same Bible that you do, the Lord says, I don't look on the outward appearance, but I look on the heart, and I believe that's one thing that I do love about what I have been seeing here more than ever. We must learn how to differ with others without dishonoring them. You know, three things that we need more of here at LBT is One is humility. The second is unity. And the third is a hunger for God. You see, what I come to find out is that the difference between us and the early church is we don't pray like they did. And since I've been doing a study in in Thessalonians, here you go. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Now, let me just break that down for you a little bit. Back several months ago when my friend came from Open Doors, and he had the guy with him, Pastor Samuel. He couldn't give his real name because he's from India. A lot of you don't know everything about Pastor Samuel, but Pastor Samuel took his four-year-old child, finally got him into a school. But they knew of Pastor Samuel's faith. His child, four-year-old, was raped right there in the school. The administration didn't do anything about it. And basically called him up and said, you need to come get your child. And when I talked to Pastor Samuel, and I would talk to him, just like when I went to Dubai and met those Iranian house church leaders. How do you continue to do this knowing you are going to be persecuted? They said it's because of the persecution that we know we're doing what we're supposed to do. He said, Pastor, don't pray for me. Pray with me. Don't pray for us. Pray with 
with us. Do you understand that concept? You know, I preached a series in here not too long ago called Change is Good. It really is. It hurts sometimes. It is. It does. You know, we're getting ready now to do a lot of things different. We launched a lot of small groups this past year. We're over 100 people, and at the end of that, we came and had a big, a nice fellowship with over 100 in the fellowship hall. You know, now we have the new choir format with praise team and orchestra schedule. We've had a lot of great comments. You see, we want to be a church that reaches people of all ages and of all different backgrounds. That's why we try to offer different ministries as well as offer different types of music that worship to the Lord in various ways. Now, don't puff all up on me, okay? But music has long been a major factor at most churches. Can I get an amen on that? But if we just think about the words we sing and just worship God while we are singing those lyrics, and that is the main thing. You know, we just sang that song, and it says, I stand there with a hammer in my hand. Well, I thank the Lord, as it says there, and he forgave, and he forgives. But I think sometimes as church people, pastors, staff, deacons, Christians, we walk in here with a hammer in our hand a lot of times, ready to do whatever we need to do because we're not happy, we're not satisfied, maybe we're frustrated. And that's not the right thing to do, but that's just who we are as human beings sometimes. There are all kinds of rhythms and beats to music as well as different instruments, but ultimately they point to the God we worship our Lord and Savior. Here at LBT, we have all types and forms of worship through hymns, praise songs, and different services. I do want to say this for the people who like different forms of music. We try to give everyone what I call a slice of the pie or different types of songs. Someone asked me about hymns, which I enjoy those as well as praise and worship. Sing them all the time in my car or wherever. However, we do offer hymns here, which are more during the 10 o'clock time, the 6 o'clock time on Sunday evenings, and then the 6 o'clock time on Wednesday evenings. However, it's hard to reach all ages, all generations, but we try to do that during 11 o'clock worship time. This is the only time that we have all generations in here, and we want to be multi-generational and offer worship for all ages. So please hear my heart for that now. We will always remember the past, and it's important, okay? But it's also important to look ahead to the future. We need to cherish the sweet memories of yesterday and the past, but we have to think ahead. Church isn't like it was in the past. You know, our kids and grandkids are the future of this church And that's why we want to disciple and bring them up in the Lord. I also said when I came to be pastor here, if you remember, that our methods may change a lot, but the gospel will never, ever change. And I will challenge anybody in here. When I don't preach the gospel and it's not scripture, then you can come and you can talk to me about that. Because I give an account to one, and that's the Lord God Almighty. That's why I give a public invitation, because I feel like that's what we're supposed to do. It grieves my heart that there's so many churches that don't give an invitation. And as I've had people like I mentioned last week, T.J. Rummings that said, Pastor, if you would have never gave an invitation, I don't even know that I'd ever even come to know the Lord. Do you understand that? There's so many things and so many differences in churches today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and the future. He loves all of us. 
regardless of our color, what we wear, if we have tattoos and piercings and what songs we do, as long as we're doing it unto the Lord and for the Lord. His love is unconditional and overwhelming no matter what we've done as we acknowledge it and look to him. I want our church, Lima Baptist Temple, to continue to be a staple and a beacon here in our community. When people hear of LBT, I want them to smile and say, yes, I know that church. Oh, yes, I'm a member there or I want to become a member there because I hear their love for people, their love for God, their love for each other and what they've been doing. I've heard wonderful compliments about things our church has been doing. Are there things we can do better? Yep. Do we make mistakes? Yep. Will we make more? Yep. Will I make more? Yep. Sure will. Because you know what? You remember this? I'm a mess. And you're a mess. But I know the person that comes in the middle of all the messes and brings us all together. Aren't you thankful? But we're also doing some great things. We've seen the Lord do great and mighty things here. So instead of trying to find something negative to complain about, I challenge you to find something we're doing positive and think on those things. If you want to open your Bibles, it's in Philippians chapter 4. If you'll go to Philippians chapter 4, I've used this passage not so long ago. Philippians chapter 4, I... When I go to staff meetings, sometimes I like to remind the staff of this because it's so easy to be bombarded by so many negative things in life. You know, it is. It's easy to wake up with that hammer in our hand and literally just want to bash our spouse, our children, a co worker, a friend. Let's just call it what it is, because we are sinful people. But this is what the Lord says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence... If there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. When you came in here this morning, what were you thinking about? Was it honorable? Was it pure? Was it commendable? If there's anything praiseworthy, think on these things. Turn over to Philippians 2. Verses 1 and 2. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27. Listen to this scripture. Take me a second to get there. Chapter 20. I mean chapter 4, I'm sorry. Chapter 4, verses 20 through 27. Let me get there. This is what it says. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are like they are life to those who find them, and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech. And put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path 
of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Psalms 19, verse 14. May these words of my mouth and these meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Romans 12, 18. If possible, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Not that it depends upon your spouse, your next door neighbor, the person sitting next to you, but far as it depends on you. Live peaceably with everyone. You know, some sweet comments we've heard recently about our church is this. It's the LBT still to this day loves the Lima cookie distribution. The Good Friday service. And, of course, the Easter service. The tornado cleanup. We went down to Dayton area, Salina. The summer block party to where we had over 800 people and it just blew some of the people's minds that we weren't asking for money or we wasn't asking for something because everybody in this day and age seems to be asking for something. People talking about vacation Bible school and the eight kids that were saved. Just talked with a precious family this past week who are going to join this church and will attend our next new member class this coming August. And they basically said when their daughter, when VBS was over, she basically cried. She was sad. Our summer mission trip. Our senior adults continue to be faithful to serve in areas and are such an encouragement to others. And and for those of you who are younger than me, I am 60. Gosh, that's old. (laughs) But for those of you who are Below that age, especially down there in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s, let me tell you something. There's never going to be a greater generation than this generation that's out here before us. They know what work is. They know about getting to work early and leaving late. That's that generation. They just keep on keeping on. This church would not even be here today if it wasn't for that generation. You see, choir is fun. If you haven't attended a choir rehearsal, I encourage you to do so, even this Thursday evening. As I said, our baptism waters are stirring. Five baptized today, and four of them were a mom, a dad, and two daughters. We've had several people say they like that we baptize when people are ready. We don't just schedule it every quarter. If we did, we'd have a lot. But I'm just telling you, I feel like when people get saved, they need to be baptized. Here is water. What hinders you from being baptized? That's also in the Bible. We have moving worship that stirs our heart. And I want people to know that the messages are from the heart. And most important, they're from the Word of God. As I said, I'm just the messenger trying to deliver the Lord's message. Some upcoming exciting things is... You know, the summer on the South Lawn usually have 125 kids at that. It's coming up for the students, which is not only fun, but the gospel is shared with them. We have a patriotic Sunday where I have my friend, Admiral Endel Lee, that will be here. His wife will be singing. And then we have a first responder service project that same week. Christmas activities this year is going to be something different that you've never seen here at Lima Baptist Temple. We have something special on December 6th, December 7th. We have our Christmas musical later that month. And then we're going to be taking an offering, and I hope it's a huge offering. And we're going to take 100% of that money, and we're going to divide it between four local mission organizations. And we're going to have them here on that next Sunday and present all of them a check. That's what we want to be about. Around here. We have a great staff. Robin Zaruba. Let me tell you what kind of man he is. 
Robin challenged our staff to fast after only being here a couple of weeks. Y'all do know what that means, don't you? He loves Jesus. He loves leading others to the throne of God through worship. And he has a great, great sense of humor. But he loves the Word of God. Ben Anderson, as most of you know, he walked away from the very successful business to follow God's calling. There's been others that have walked away from ministry to go out into the business world. Whether you want to say that's leaving God's calling or whatever, but there is a big difference. He loves leading others. He loves when he brings to the table, he brings to the table a heart for people, strong leadership skills, and a team concept for our staff. When he came on staff, it was funny, before he came on staff, I was telling our other staff, you just need to understand, this is what you need to know. Tell Ben, ask Ben. He has dotted my I's, he has crossed my T's. It's amazing. You see, I love to invest in people. If you don't know that, I won't ask you to raise your hand, but I've been in so many of your homes. When you call me, that's what I love to do. There's a lot of people that just love to preach, but I love to pastor. We got home last night from the wedding at 730 the Lord was telling me all this. I needed to put this together, get a phone call from someone, said, hey, can I come over and talk? I said, sure. Got there at 8. They left at 10. That is my heart. I love the people. I love doing that. Michael Green, he leads our student ministry in various avenues with his straightforward approach. He's gifted and created in sound and tech and graphic arts. It takes a lot to make all this stuff happen. Pastor Gary is one of the best senior adult pastors around. And he is the best that I have ever seen doing a funeral. And I told him, God forbid, but if I die before him, that I wanted him to do my funeral. Because I'm going to tell you guys, I have seen him, and I know how the funeral homes call. And Pastor Gary, we got this family, and... Uh, you ever heard of them? Nope. Well, here's the day. And you get to the funeral, and man, you think he had known them all his life. Very, very gifted in that area. We have a great support staff who keeps everyone going. Jenna Booker, she is what I call a relationship magnet. One of the best children's directors ever. Always smiling. Never down. A person who loves on all the kids unconditionally. You see, all of our staff members have servant hearts. And each has different gifts and abilities that make us a team. But can I go ahead and tell you, all of us are far from perfect. We went on a staff retreat just a couple weeks ago. We beat each other up pretty good. And then we loved on each other pretty good. We know what makes each other tick. My whole point for what I'm talking about today is we are going to continue to move forward for the kingdom of God. And I am excited about it. Again, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without season. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and unsearchable things you do not know. This is what I want to do this morning. And I never force anybody's hands. But look, when it comes to the invitation, I take that very serious. When people get up and leave during the invitation, I've said this before. It's almost like a heart surgeon getting ready to do heart surgery. And somebody gets up and it just bumps the scaffold. Because the Holy Spirit is in this place. And he chooses to visit Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. But let me just ask you today. Is there something in your life that maybe you just need to check at the door? Is there something in your life today that you need God's help with in a relationship? 
in your finances, your marriage, your job, just life. This is what I want to do today. I don't think I've ever done this but once or twice, but I'm in a moment when I, we stand. If you don't know the Lord, I would love for you to come and say, Pastor, I want to know the Lord. You grab one of us pastors by the hand. I'm also going to ask when we stand and pray that our deacons come and lead out in prayer here. And for those of you who are prayer warriors, and those of you who want to see God do what God does, and you want to see this church strive and thrive, if you had come today to this altar and just pray for nothing else, for this church, for me, your staff, for one another. Listen, you've heard me say, when a church gets on fire, people will come watch it burn. And that's what I want. Let's pray together. Father, this morning I thank you for your word. And I thank you, Lord, for allowing me the privilege of delivering it. Lord, I know I probably stumbled through a lot of it. But, Lord, we thank you that your word never, ever, ever returns void. Lord, I pray that each person in this place today would understand that they're not here by accident. That, God, you knew who would be in this place today. Lord, this today was for all of us. Lord, we want to be a loving church, an encouraging church, a welcoming church, an inviting church. God, we want to be loving people to one another. So God, today, as we come to this altar, as we lay it down, as Aaron sang so well, it's our desire, Lord, to bring all of this to you today, to leave it at your feet. We'll ask all of this and give you all the glory because it's in your name we ask it. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us today. We believe that God wants to do great things for you and through, and we would love to hear about it. So please take a moment to share your story or prayer request with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org or download our church app available for both iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message.